think of my formidable beard? It is sexy. You know, my beard and the beard that Bradley Cooper had. Basically ripped off. They're kind of like the same. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Absolutely. <laughs> so what it. does what does Christian Bale, Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo, did I say that right? DiCaprio, Jennifer Lopez, Will Smith, Tom Cruise, and Bradley Cooper and myself all have in common? A beard? Yeah, they would have had to have a formidable beard for this actual role. That's true. Because Christian Bale, Leonardo, and Jennifer Lopez, and oh, Will Jennifer Smith. Lopez. <laughs> you, I you, forgot. You met, I was trying to one, think, did you? you mention any females <laughs> was, in here where yeah, I wouldn't I get her? That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> they may have been in this film instead of some of the other actors. Movies. The average person can be inspired by them. They can make us laugh. Movies can keep us on the edge of our seat and so much more. Maddie's Movie Mix is a podcast for movie enthusiasts of all kinds. We hope you enjoy the show. Wait, 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 wait. Matt Logan! Yes, we both have the same problem. You. Listen. You smell something? yippee ki This is Tyler Peterson. Could you imagine Christian Bale singing? That would be a hard no. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to see it either. Of course, we are talking about A Star is Born. A Star is Born, yes, sir. Sounds like a Disney film. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And that there's actually other older films That's a with fourth, the same name. Yeah. It's the fourth uh, version. Yeah. An adaptation. Right. Oh. It's an emotional one too. This is gonna Okay. I haven't I hadn't seen this. Which I mean it came out in surprise. 2018. I knew, I mean, it was good. I, I heard it was good. I didn't, shouldn't say I know it was good. This was a good film. I'm just going to get that right yeah. out of the gate. We should talk about your butt. And should we do that? Yeah, because it exceptionally well. Go ahead. Talk about it. Yeah, I don't have was, to talk about the budget. I, well, because you've been talking about it, like, oh, I should research. Because it is interesting it to is. look at to see um, how much money they had and how much money they made. Because that's a tell of how the film's going to be. Exactly. So what I had at least was thirty-six million dollar budget. Yep. They made four hundred thirty-four million dollars. Uh, yep. I am close. I'm a little different, but yeah, close. Yeah. yeah. We're all a little bit different. Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but that's insane. That's an incredibly sign of a great movie. So if you remember, Ghostbusters back in nineteen eighty-four had a budget of very similar. Yeah. Right. And didn't do nearly this kind of these no, kind of dollars. They did. Do you have that right on your? Yeah, because actually. Oh wait, no, because you keep track of the budget typically. Yeah. I lied. Okay. I, I've been trying to. I don't have it that readily one. available. <laughs> I don't have it readily available. But yeah, uh, pretty incredible when you talk about a similar budget from you know thirty seven years ago or whatever. Yeah. To today, oh well, four years ago, I guess technically. Right. But. Um, and you have it just knock it out of the park like this. Yeah. That's why they can make crappy movies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But wow. Spectacular. Um, what are some of your cool facts? Uh, well, it was funny. I what I fact I found was that Bradley Cooper worked with the dialect coach before Sam Elliott was signed on. To sound like Sam Elliott. No kidding. Yeah. And then so this is when I looked up before watching again. I think I figured out how I'm going to do my research. Older films that I've seen before, I'll do research beforehand sure. so I can pick it up while I'm watching it. And new films, I'll research later. Yeah. That's a side note if you care about my process at all. <laughs> but so then that one was cool because <clears throat> I, I looked that one up and then they sound like brothers. They have... Yes. Very similar voices, where I thought was really cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to that. Maybe you know this already, but I had heard from a reliable source that he, in order to get that depth of his voice, because his voice isn't that deep. No, 
he had to hunch over all the time. Oh, really? Like he had to like I I don't know if you know if, if that opens up his airways or how. However, it, it I wonder for if it's him. constricting where it comes out. Y- yeah, or right where he. I should say when he stands up, his airways yeah. are more. But it's he. That's what he had to do to that's really crazy. get that. Yeah, and and you. Th- yeah, that's what he his acting in the film was very much that way he yeah. al- was always like almost Stupid embarrassed he didn't yeah yeah didn't want to look people in the eye type thing and it was like you know that made a lot of sense so yeah. I, I thought that was an interesting fact too yeah i agree the concerts scenes were all shot live by the direction of lady gaga which i thought was a great choice uh Derek jones who plays uh um jack's ear doctor is actually Bradley Cooper's real doctor. What? Yeah. Which is crazy. I don't know why. It was like, oh, do you want to play a doctor in a film? Really? Yeah. Well, Bradley Cooper, of course, uh, directed it. Yes. Uh, his de- he had a dra- lot of directorial direction. Yeah. De- debut. So I guess that would make sense. He would yeah. bring somebody in that would, yeah. The other two I have is Bradley Cooper learned how to play multiple instruments for this film, being the guitar and piano. And then the spoiler, they get a, I guess it's not a spoiler. There's a dog at the end of the film when Jack and Allie get together. That's Bradley Cooper's real dog. Really? Which I thought was incredible because that dog seemed pretty well trained. Very well trained. Yeah. Yeah. You And you would know. <laughs> My <laughs> wife would know. <laughs> well, you see. I, I mean, right. you observe, I'm saying. Like, you can see what an, a well trained dog You're is. You're right. Mentally, I was thinking of, like, how would Megan get talks to do this I was like that's pretty exceptional yeah I uh you know some of the things obviously Lady Gaga we we expected to perform phenomenally as usual she's very talented well I didn't know for sure because she wasn't in a bunch I, of films before I, this I mean perform in, uh, in the singing part of yes. it yes like that's okay. her thing right? sounds obviously. good obviously yes. yeah so we knew that I heard, of course, that uh, Bradley Cooper did his own singing, and I'm thinking, huh? This man can do everything. You know, while well, I'm thinking this is going to suck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. But then I was like, yeah, this dude can do it. It's like Hugh Jackman. Like, yes. what can't that man do? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I don't know a lot about Bradley Cooper, but lot of respect for his talent i mean for sure yeah i don't know you know and that's fine i don't need to know a lot about him but for him to go through this process and things i thought was was good of him to do because most actors probably wouldn't and for him to step up and and do this and then say hey yeah by the way it was a lot harder than i thought it was going to be yeah you know well because he personally had to do a lot of things for this film right I mean, you look at its first directorial or first time directing, learning new instruments, performing on a live stage. Like, I think that performing on a live stage probably is. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but I think it's probably something that he was not afraid of. No. But I mean, it's still a first time doing things and putting yourself out there in different atmospheres. It's, it's not hard, but isn't always easy at right. the same point right um what are we gonna go what are we gonna move on to something here or are we gonna keep uh keep going you know what let me say this actually before we come to and, and you can add something too but so there's an actor in this film and they come on screen and i'm like he's i recognize him what who what who is he blah 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 He's old Andrew Dice Clay. He's the dad. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, wow. That's weird. Yeah. To me. Okay. Because, I, I mean, Andrew Dice Clay goes way back. Like, he's, I thought he was closer to my age. I don't know how old he is. I didn't look it up. But right. I, I mean, it's like, I remember him as his career, his was really taken off and all those things which was a very long time ago now right but i remember all that and then he's in this as the dad and he definitely looks like he's the dad yeah and you know here i am a grandpa and i feel like (laughs) i look younger 
oh yeah, he's way older than I am, so never mind. <laughs> um, but see, I just remember when his career was taking off. So. Oh yeah. Anyway, I thought that was uh, a, a unique thing too with him um, for me personally. Yeah, I think uh, I read somewhere where it sounded the relationship between Allie and her dad is sim- similar to what Lady Gaga experienced with her own dad. Oh, really? So uh, sure. it makes, I mean, to me, I wonder how similar this is to Lady Gaga's story. Because it, it really does seem... Yeah, I can see what you're I saying. Can see, there's a lot of parallels. And again, I don't know Lady Gaga well enough in her story, but I could see where when she was trying to act as Allie, where she could draw off a personal experience. Mm-hmm. 1937 was the first film. Yep. Uh, a 1954 musical and a 76 musical is what I have okay. written down. I don't think the 76 one did well. Sure. I didn't. I, all I did was I just <laughs> put that in my notes here. Um, I didn't really actually read about it. But the uh, can, but can you imagine, like, um, you know, Tom Cruise in this role or something like that? Well, when we, if we want to start talking about actor chemistry. Yeah. The thing that this is another one of those films where it's based off of, I think two main protagonists and their story and their progression and that being Allie and Jack. And I think Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga had a dynamite relationship in this film. Um, They really worked well together. You could, it felt like when Jack's character was going through pain, Lady Gaga's character, Allie was right there alongside him really wanting balancing that mix of you know she's always wanted to be a performer on the big stage being able to talk about the things she had to say through song but also having a deep intimate relationship with her husband and not wanting to see him fail right and again we're going to talk about it but that's really where this form kind of you see it's kind of like a rubber band where you know bradley cooper launches her career Mm -hmm. and because of that now there's tension between his character and Allie because now he's not doing as well but wants her his wife to do well and doesn't know how to handle those emotions yeah he doesn't know how to handle those emotions but the other part of it too is is he kind of warned her to not lose who she was yeah and he she clearly did she did um which is not, I'm not saying that's good, bad, or in between, but it's just obviously and probably pretty normal. Right. But he really warned her, like, hey, my experience, you need to understand, don't lose yourself, basically. I mean, I'm well, obviously condensing it very much, but. There was that line he had of, you have something to say. Yeah. Don't let other people tell you how to say it. Yes. And so, and that was really early on in the relationship. And uh, I think you're right. That's another place where he saw Allie really change into somebody else with a change of hair, even the style. And, yeah. um, uh, the dancers apparel. and stuff That's was true. a big deal. You yeah. know, that, that she wasn't going to do stuff like that. But then mm-hmm. ended up, right. You know, money gets in the way. Yeah. Those broken promises of you know, the industry telling you can have whatever you want, but then puts all these. You can have whatever you want as long as you do it. How well, how well That's right. Want. Exactly. You can say it however you want, but here's your script. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like some of the things in the world, uh, we're in this together as long as you do it like we tell you. That's right. And, and that's the, the whole thing is like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Though. But what. What was interesting to me was is uh, how I think he shocked her into a couple of things is how I would word it, I guess. I'm not sure if he did that because he was hurt, as obviously this is a character, but because he was hurt or if he did that to kind of shock her into some of the reality. Right. You know, did you notice that? 
Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Man, the relation... It, it was so... It seems so authentic at t- most yeah. of the film. Of like, they didn't I was pro- in. They didn't sugarcoat anything about how relationships can work. And especially at the high-profile setting that they're at. I was in. Yeah. I, I bought it. Yeah. All of it. I was so excited to hear you watch this. I, This movie I really like. I do, too. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. I mean, I really didn't think I would like it. I really did not have a good attitude going into it. Yeah. Seriously, did not have a good attitude going into it. And that's why it's so good. That's why we've talked about that on other podcasts. That's why I think the one or two generations obviously yeah. bring a completely different thing to the table. The other thing is is that we're we've been pushing each other a little bit on what yeah. to watch. I'll watch your <laughs> horror films right? and you can watch my musicals. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. Um, I I was like, I'm watching this and I'm like, way to go, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, it's really good. I gave it a 4.7 for actor chemistry. Yep. Uh, there was just a few of the side characters. Uh, one was the that r- kind of brought it down a, a little bit was the driver that he had at the beginning of the film um oh, he's yeah. a good actor but i, I always remember him from heroes yes exactly yep he's a good actor i think but in this particular thing it just didn't seem believable and so there's a couple little things like that that yeah. brought it down because i thought i didn't know watching this who the, the director was yep um and we haven't even really talked about Sam Elliott's character. No, right. And so, you know, I, I'm looking at all these different things and, like, it can't quite get a perfect score because there's some of these other little things in the side. Yeah. But it was really good. Yeah. I thought. Yeah, where it mattered. It shined bright. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I gave it a 4.6. I really loved all the interactions. Um, the tension between... Um, Bobby and Jack, uh, mm-hmm. their history, their pain from their dad, Bobby really wanting the best for Jack and Jack being, you don't really care about me. I just want to do my own thing. Um, and then yeah, Jack and Al- there's just so many phenomenal characters. I love watching every moment of it and seeing where the relationship headed. We're going to do the big spoiler in overall entertainment. <laughs> yeah we'll we'll divulge it then i just thought of that we should probably we'll have to talk about it yeah it's and, and we'll probably talk about that it's a big spoiler yeah if you haven't seen the film i was like whoa and they did it we get even if you get to cinematic. I mean, you can really talk about how we can talk about this anywhere, was but done. Can we can we agree to do it at the end? Yeah, <laughs> I want to emotionally get through there's, this. There's going to be a spoiler at the end. <clears throat> get yourself mentally prepared in your Kleenex box. That's right. At it's ready. Filming locations. I, I mean, there were a lot of stages. I mean, each place seemed authentic. They went to a grocery store bright lights which i always think when i go into a grocery store why didn't i bring my sunglasses um the bars being dark lit and stuff like that i gave it a 4.4 i really enjoyed it nothing really stuck out i'm tied yeah four four uh i agree i think that they each location was uh appeared genuine yeah yeah totally agree Cinematography. That one was easy. There's not much to talk about in locations for a film like this. No. Uh, There was nothing exciting. There was nothing but authentic. Yeah. That's how I would word it. Right. That man, that's the most important part to the the locations aren't throwing you off to the story. Right. It did exactly that. Yeah. Cinematography. How it looks on the screen. I really uh, enjoyed. One thing that stuck out to me at right at the beginning when they popped out a star is born of when Ali is walking down the alleyway and then the red lights, it almost seemed like it was a throwback to older films Yeah. of those red. Cause that's what totally. I remember from old. And I was like, this is going to be cool. Yeah. 
Um, really enjoyed that choice. Um, and oh my gosh, there was a lot of foreshadowing, which we're going to get later because we talked about we get overall entertainment is when yeah. we'll release that yeah. spoiler. But cinematography wise, there were a lot of things that led up to that, which I noticed on the background because this is one I had seen you hadn't. And so I was like, I know what's going to happen. Yes. And so you can look for other things. I, then then mm-hmm. I saw things. I was like, well, that's interesting that they put that here. Yeah. Um, so well, that'll be to continued. <laughs> uh, and the scene where Allie and Jack first lock eyes while Allie was singing seemed really real where she was, they were at the, um, Oh my gosh. Drag bar, the drag bar. Yeah. And she was across the bar and they, she slowly turns her head while Jack's looking at her the whole time, but then they lock. Yeah. And you could just tell there was a spark in a moment there. Um, so I thought that was really well shot. Um, lots of red in the lightings, whether that was on stage, which I, I just noticed that it, mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It was just different. Um, and then cameras panning to a lot of different shots during some of those, um, concert scenes Mm -hmm. which makes sense because what i'm thinking of a concert if you're there you're going to be like if you're in the mosh but you're jumping up and down so it does seem like it's moving around quite a bit yep um so i really enjoyed cinematography i gave it a 4.4 for all those reasons nice thought it was good so i i uh i gave it a 4.2 i'll just say because the um there was a couple of things and i i i guess some of the house scenes seemed a little bit. I think the house when they were in when oh, Allie, later Allie's, yeah. Allie's house and then Dave Chappelle's character's house, they were too small. Yeah, for me, I didn't think they were captured very well. Yeah, one of the things it's a hard balance for me because one of the things I get frustrated with it is like they're shooting in a house and it's like that house is not that big. Right. You know, but then they do a small one, but then they do a small one and it's like, this, this is really a condensed. Little, like, yeah. yeah. Um, so I didn't like some of that, how that came across on, on the, on the screen, I guess. Um, so 4.2 is, is that's some of the main reasons, but I really love the concerts. I, I did know going into this one that um, these, these were done like as real live concerts yeah film that way i should say and so um that's tricky it is you only have a that's few it times this is catch. it yeah right this you know this one concert this is one concert yeah and that's it it's like this podcast we right. don't edit it no this Raw. is it <laughs> so the that piece of it was the lighting and the angles, you know, how they had some of the camera angles yeah. and the way the lights hit. That's a lot of planning to it make is. sure that that gets hit on film properly. Right. And so that was really good for me. Yeah. I, I, so there was that couple things I didn't like, but a lot I did. Could you imagine going to that concert? It would be a weird... Do you have to sign... Like I thought about this, do you have to sign like a... a the liabilities a, and waivers? Yeah, like a... Um, where you what's oh, i just i i totally lost it where you have to sign something that you can't talk about it what do they call those oh uh it's a disclosure yeah uh, it's, oh i know what you're talking about too yeah so i don't know why we're both like brain fog on this one but um do you go as a concert goer do you have to talk about or do you have to sign this thing that you can't talk about it uh, the only thing that pops into my mind right now is uh, is a, a non compete agreement, and that's not it, obviously. <laughs> but I'll think of it. You cannot make your own film like this, right? It's like, <laughs> that's, dumb, but that's what. That's right. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I was. If you're watching, I'm just staring in blank space because I'm. It's gonna bother me. Yeah. But that's a good point. I don't know. But, I mean, there's a lot of things where that happens, I feel, where I'm sure that they have to sign something. Yeah, you would think so because you don't want – that's a pretty big thing to get out there like, oh, this is what happened. You know, I I mean, obviously – But at the same point, it's not – I mean, it's big in this – it's a balance. It's not like any of those scenes are throwing off any of the story. So at least 
they got That's that going for them. It's just really they're there for the musical performance, and they can say, "Oh, I could see these. I saw these people play together," but it's not like maybe recording the songs at the same point. It's gonna be terrible quality. I don't know. Yeah. So the, I think they lucked out on that part. Another way, maybe I don't. I could maybe look this up, I suppose, but they um, they could have filmed that at the very end, so really close to release. That's true. You know, had everything else ready to go. Yeah. Um, film that, threw it in. You know, I don't know. I'm probably overthinking it. But it's taking pretty pretty big risk design. not to get that till the end. <laughs> I know. Costume design. There I lots of dresses. You know, the, the there was some cool. Yeah. things in there um for sure uh it was very normal clothing obviously that's also good in a film like this like every well, especially day. at the beginning yeah yeah for sure so i gave it a 4.1 because it just made sense there was a couple of those things that like wow right yeah. i like it you know i what i enjoyed about the costume design was ali's character specifically because she really did go through a change Mm -hmm. in this film and when it comes to her music i mean she started as in the drag where she had the fake eyebrows you know over personified character but then she went back to a little bit more to reality when he was she was performing just with jack and then she split off and started doing her own thing and they start seeing the hair change you start seeing her dresses and outfits change to fit what the producer or the agent agent was wanting and so i enjoyed that aspect where the costumes on her spart part was very indicative of her changing as a person yeah on top of it so i gave it a 4.4 just because of that Mm. um, because it really was an important part yeah very true very true Music. Was the music any good in this? I didn't even hear anything. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How many awards were they nominated for and win, actually? I mean, they won a lot. I don't know. I didn't look at the awards. I didn't either, but I remember like they won all kinds of awards for the music. There are so many good songs. So many good songs. Um, Obviously, Shallow and, you know, this that was was done just amazingly. Um, If you ever want a good shower song... That just because I sing in the shower. If you're ever curious about that, this is a good one. I wasn't. Yeah, but thanks. If you wanted that visual, <laughs> no visual, no visual. <laughs> Producers um. over here <laughs> trying not to make a noise because she's belly laughing. But oh my gosh, I yeah, I sing I, the song. It's a great song. It's a great song because there's the huge part where. Uh, you're almost my rah, 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 <laughs> right but it's more emotionally yes. and so yeah i really enjoyed oh my gosh the music is so it, good the music is so good and i think the cool part about this film is i don't know from my understanding musicals aren't you don't like you don't typically they're not your first choice they're not my first choice and so i think what's cool i have not seen the sound of music because i just don't want to Okay. I know it's really good. Well, here's the thing I'll say about The Sound of Music. Um, I typically like musicals. Do not enjoy that one. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. I know so, so many when I was people a kid, that are like, I, they love it. Oh, I people can love it, and they can do them. But I remember no when I was a kid in high school, was watching it with my parents for the first time, where I got to the intermission, or I we got to like, it was declining towards the intermission. I was like, oh, the movie is almost over. <laughs> and this is great because I don't want to watch this anymore. Nope. A movie decides to do an intermission. And then there's a whole second half of things I... People who love it, you're great people. And I appreciate you for who you are. I just can't. It was too much. Yeah. But normally I do like musicals. Um but the thing that I was going to say about what's nice about this one is that it isn't you have a whole soundtrack still of popular songs but the way the movie goes through it doesn't feel like a musical because the songs are being sung at parts where 
that a concert, or it really just makes sense and coherent to the film. It's not like um, people are just randomly bursting out into song, which I can understand why people don't like that. I love it most of the time. Um, but I think that really helps this film draw in a different audience. You know that Beetlejuice was supposed to be a musical? <laughs> I did not. No, I didn't either. I just thought I'd say that to see if it, it's not true. Oh, isn't it? No. I'm just being stupid. Well, just to to, be, just they to make throw, anything into musicals Just nowadays. to throw you off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> got to be careful how many times you say that. <laughs> <laughs> what, Beetlejuice? <laughs> Anyway, I gave sorry, a- I had to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Mike? Okay. Left Michael field. Keaton. Nope. Not right now that trail. Um, so I gave it a 4.7. I really enjoyed the score. Uh, I really enjoyed how it played out through the film. Again, like even there's not a lot of music in the background in this. No. Um, it's either a song. Because I was trying to find out who the composer was for this. And because normally I'll just tell you a straight... I mean, for... I don't think I have that. I didn't write that down. Well, it's hard to find. Okay. So it was a collab with Lady Gaga Studio DJ White Shadow. It ran by assortment of country singers, notably Lucas Nelson, who was in Jack's band, and he's Willie Nelson's son. That's the facts I found on that. But normally when I'm looking this up, you can just find it under... um, composer yeah but this one really doesn't have that because listening to it it doesn't really have like your typical just white noise music in the background it's either the conversations that are being had or there's some sort of like singing transition but there isn't a lot of stuff going on no there wasn't which again i didn't mind because the music was so good and they didn't really need that because again the relationships were so interesting and i think that might have taken away from yeah, absolutely. Um, fist bump tied 4.7 for me, too. Overall entertainment value spoilers, 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 spoilers. This is not a drill. Woosa, <sighs> was that? What was <laughs> Woosa? Was that was in uh, Mufasa. 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 That Mufasa, was in Mufasa. Uh, Wusa was in um, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Uh, bad Bad Boys. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember the their boss or whatever. Right. Wusa. <laughs> Calming, like I'm stressed. That yeah. this ending. It was. It got shock. me. Yeah. And it yeah it was shock and it got me. Do you, want, do you want to say what that uh, shock was? Dude cut his formidable beard off. No. <laughs> this isn't uh, Dune when uh, <laughs> Jason Momoa cut off his beard. No. <clears throat> <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I was, it, he hung himself yeah. in the garage. Um with his dog sitting out in the yeah, that was it was sad. Like I was, felt it, like, yeah. and it led up to. I mean, that whole scene, you knew exactly what was going to happen during each leading up to it. Um, you saw the the him walking out to the garage, giving his dog a steak, and then going out with his belt and tying it to a rafters and then all you see is I think the garage door closing in his feet when he jumped or yeah and then oh my gosh if that didn't get you his dog comes out and then sits in front of the garage I uh yeah meanwhile Allie is trying to get a hold Right, he, he was supposed to be there to sing the duet. And, yeah. Oh, boy. Um, and this this particular film, because of how they did such a fantastic, incredible, phenomenal, and all kinds of other adjectives, job in the beginning of it made you just feel it. 
Yeah, I mean, like he was recover in recovery for right? months and months. I mean, he spent months at a recovery facility. And then Ali on the flip side of like, I don't want to go on this tour because my husband and my relationship with him is so important that I need to build that up and be there with him. And so you're, you're typically what happens in a film like that is that you, you see this coming together. They're going to do this beautiful duet together. Relationships have been mended and you can see their, them walking out into the sunshine. Mm hmm. But no, this is, and that's something that's fantastic, fantastically done is that this film is so real. I mean, depression is not easy to deal with. And so there are so many things where you can blame yourself. You can blame whoever. I wanted to beat up the agent. Yeah. yeah he, he deserved to get beat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't. How can he be so heartless to understand knowing what Jack had gone through and yeah, or pull out all because his alley was, I, I mean, I, this is really real life stuff right. and that's why it hits so hard because Allie's agent, uh, Allie is a cash. She's an icon. Yeah. To him. So he gets paid when she performs when you know all those things so it's like he wanted to at some level disconnect the two of them yeah people he was his character people centric where he's good with people mm -hmm. but really he does not care about people no no at all right yeah so and then she was singing um the song that he had wrote well, they had, his memorial. She had, oh yeah, yeah, at the very end. Yeah. And I'm like, with tears, like, I was born. I needed it. It was, it was tough. So much to take in. Again, because it was so well done, and the film did a really good job going back to cinematography, of putting notes where you could see how. The, where the, the writing was on the wall at the end. Yeah, I, it totally. And the way they did the kind of the slow process of him getting out of the truck. Yeah. You know, um, like even setting talking. his hat down. Yeah. You know, some of those things were like, oh no. But even like in the beginnings, like some of the very beginning scenes. Yeah. I forget the full context, but I think there were some nooses with neon, neon, neon in the, or rainbow in the background when he was first going to the Drake barn. Oh, I see. I did. That was one thing I noticed this time. Okay. And then the conversation with his therapist. Yes. Both of those things of, again, it's not the ending that you want, right. but it's one of those films. If you watch it again, you can really pick up on those things of like, man, this is hard. Yeah. And it's real, yeah. but because we all have seen or heard or whatever about a story similar to this, right? Um, it just happens. So anyway, that's super powerful. Everything leading up to it yeah. had me like wanting to watch and absorb every second of this film. So I gave the overall. Full we were on the same wave on today. Are I we also really? gave it a 4.5. That's actually kind of rare. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're super far off no. generally, but so yeah, um and the overall rating, you know, ends up for everything involved in the film is a 4.4. .4. Did you just like take no, oh my. you know how I honestly do this, this part, I take all six of those. So I take actor chemistry, filming locations, oh, do you do the... cinematography. I do the mathematical equation. Oh, I do not. S I'm right. No, and that's man. okay. No, and that's okay. <laughs> but that's how I take that overall rating is like, okay, all of these things that are added up, you know, and you divide them. This is what we have. Well, maybe mentally I'm just better at math than I thought I was. And so when I get to it gets, it could <laughs> that be. That is not true. No, it could um, be. 
Oh gosh. The other thing I just want to mention real quick with overall entertainment, I liked that there was loose ends at the end. Yeah. You don't get resolutions with yeah. any of I mean you get one resolution when they with Jack's character, but other than that, we don't know what's going to happen with Allie's character. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going to happen with Bobby's character and how are they going to now deal with the emotions and the fallout from what just happened. Um Again, I think films, especially when it is more happy or where they're getting a happy ending and everyone gets their ending, I think it's great at times. But I also do enjoy films where it just leaves it open. And you can really think of how would you react in the setting because you can. You can just say, you know what, she's probably really going to struggle with this. I don't think she would go back to the film. You can have those conversations rather than the film just drawing those conclusions for you, which I enjoy, especially in films like this that really are meant to make you think about things. Yeah. Um, but I, I gave it a 4.4. 4. <laughs> You're my mathematical <laughs> your, equation right. of... <laughs> your quick math. That's right. At least it's not new math. No, no, no. Well, that's impossible. <laughs> 2 plus 2 equals 5 now, right? You're rounding up. That's right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was. Uh, what are your last thoughts? Wrap us up. I want to see Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga work together in the future with films similar to this because they got a chemistry and they obviously have direction for working together. I just, I, it's one of those films where the film was a perfect length. I just yeah. really because yeah. of that, I it yeah. leaves you wanting more, which is yes. What they films say, this is where you want to be at the end, where you want to leave them asking mm-hmm. for more. Well, that's where I'm at. Yes, I, if totally. I wish there was more to this, or that. I mean, you can't really do a. I don't know. I don't know how you do this, but I just want another film similar to this where right. I can see them work together. Do a, do a prequel of their lives separately. I don't know, but. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree. It it uh, it's definitely one of those things that you have to just absorb yourself into. Yeah. And because it's so good and that relatable. they should have relatable and they should have a future yeah you know okay so i'll see you later huh i'll give you a call so it's done it's done